Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is July 28, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. A woman from one of India's largest tribal groups was chosen as India's new president. Drupadi Murmu started out as a school teacher before entering politics and has been a two-time lawmaker from Prime Minister Narendra Modi's party. This has to be cause for celebration around the world and in India. To let us know just how excited women in India are, let's welcome our special correspondent, Manikiran. Welcome, Manikiran. Tell us about how the women in India are responding to a female president. Hey, hi, T. Erica. I am super excited today because uh, something uh, unbelievable, I'd say, has happened in India. We just elected our new president and she's a woman and she's not just any woman. She's a woman from uh, one of the indigenous communities in India. So she's the first indigenous president of India. That's a very big deal. I don't think that that like something like this has happened in a lot of developed nations as well. So yeah, talk about representation. Woo, India is way ahead. And she's the second female president of India. So she is going to be the first citizen of a country with 1.4 billion people. That's something huge. And um, we are very excited. This is, um, I think this is a new chapter of history. We have created history with this. And uh, you know how inspiring this is going to be for women, for children, and particularly for uh, children and youth from the tribal communities. When I say tribal communities, I mean the indigenous people of India. So there are about uh, 700 tribes or indigenous tribes in India. Uh, which means around a uh, hundred million people. And uh, they are uh, uh, like some of, the, like they are not represented as much as they should be. So this is a step in the right direction. And I hope things like this follow in future. And this is like a, a setting, a tre- this is a trendsetter. That's what I'm trying to say. Marikiran, I am very happy about India's new female president, too. President Drew Prodi brings the list of current countries with female leaders to 30. In other news, a new scientific review has found no clear evidence that low serotonin levels are responsible for depression. This groundbreaking news shifts the narrative that depression is due to a chemical imbalance and can be cured by prescription drugs like Prozac. Nearly one out of six people in the United Kingdom and millions of people around the world use antidepressants to help improve their moods because their doctors recommended them. But the study, which was done over decades, has shown no correlation between taking antidepressant drugs and improved moods. The authors of the study involving tens of thousands of people and published in the journal Molecular Psychiatry looked at studies where serotonin levels were artificially lowered in hundreds of people and concluded that lowering serotonin did not produce depression in hundreds of healthy volunteers. And the same study recognized the impact that stressful life events had on increased depression. The study's lead author, Joanna Moncrief, a professor of psychiatry at University College London said, thousands of people suffer from side effects of antidepressants, including the severe withdrawal effects that can occur when people try to stop them yet prescription rates continue to rise. We believe this situation has been driven partly by the false belief that depression is due to a chemical imbalance. It is high time to inform the public that this belief is not grounded in science. Whoop, there it is. Who benefits from our society's addiction to antidepressants? Well, it's definitely not the person who's depressed. I have never thought that a chemical imbalance was causing my depression. I always felt that I was depressed because I can't force myself to fit into this toxic society. Maybe I was right. In other news, Instagram is being sued by two parents who blame the social media app 
were causing and contributing to burgeoning mental health crisis perpetuated upon the children and teenagers of the United States. The lawsuits, which were filed against Meta, the parent company of both Facebook and Instagram, believe the company should be held responsible for the mental distress children feel. One of the parents, Jennifer Martin, claimed her daughter opened an Instagram account at the age of 12 and then began seeing content about eating disorders, which influenced her to develop anorexia, ultimately leading to hospitalization. Another mother, Candace West, believes her 12-year-old daughter's addiction to Instagram drove her to attempt suicide. Well, damn. I don't think parents should blame an app for their children's mental health issues, but in this society, everyone wants to place the blame on others and then benefit from it financially. Although children are going to do what they want to do, parents should teach their children how to manage their decisions by giving them an overview of the results that they can choose. Instead of saying, don't do drugs, parents can say, these are the results of drug use and allow children to choose which result they want. And I don't think parents should overly monitor their kids' social media. Instead, spend time with your children on social media and teach them lessons about its influence and accuracy. If those parents have spoken to their daughters about how fake social media is and how to place value on what they see, those little girls would be armed with intelligent discernment instead of being blindly influenced by strangers. You can influence the way your children think or you can allow society to do it. Either way, don't sue someone else for influencing them. We are influencers. We're doing our job. You are a parent. Do your job. Well, it's time for a break. Did you hear about the woman who shot her husband in the head? And another woman tried to find the cure for being a lesbian. Guess what happened? I'll tell you all about it when we come back. Don't miss it. Hey, my name is Fong Tran and I am an ACSM certified exercise physiologist or you can call me a personal trainer. My job is to encourage women just like you to understand true fitness and designs an exercise routine that fits into your life as opposed to you falling into an endless cycle of disinformation and that's the whole reason why I created Be Active is Easy Be Active is Easy is exactly what you think it is when you think of being active or being fit in general you think of all kinds of rules what to do, what not to do that's why my training program Fun Fitness with Fong and Taylor Fit are personalized to your lifestyle and experience I'm literally at a gym right now preparing to teach women to exercise correctly this is what I do so once again if you have any question about fitness look out for be active is easy on Instagram Twitter or even on Google welcome back I am T Erica with the feisty news for women girl guess what did you hear about the woman who shot her husband when she found out that he had molested several children? Yes. On July 21st, Chantiri Weems shot her husband, James Weems, a former Baltimore police officer, inside their room at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Chantiri's daycare business was shut down weeks ago when several parents reported that their children had been molested by her husband, the daycare's bus driver. After yet another report of molestation, Chantiri confronted her husband while inside the hotel room and she says he responded in a menacing way, so she went to her purse to grab her gun and she shot him in the head and the leg. After hotel workers called the police, a standoff ensued with Chantiri refusing to open the door. Police had to force their way into the hotel room and found James Weems Jr. wounded. They arrested Chantiri and rushed James to the hospital where he is still recovering from non-life-threatening injuries. James now faces multiple charges and will be extradited to Baltimore County Jail when he is released from the hospital. Police found a notebook detailing Shantiri's plan to shoot her husband. Shantiri has been charged with a single count of assault with the intent to kill, and she claims the shooting was in self-defense. Well, I know we as women are supposed to be polite and gracious, but if James Weems Jr. molested those kids, he deserves to die. Child molesters deserve death, period. In other news, we're living the feisty life and sometimes we get caught up in trying to please society and it makes things even worse. Let's meet Elena. Elena, tell us what happened when you tried society's cure for your illness and how that worked out for you. 
Hi, my name is Elena Joy. My pronouns are she, her, and I tried conversion therapy. I know a lot of us think that it doesn't even exist anymore, but actually conversion therapy is any therapy whose goal is to result in heteronormative attraction and suppress any same-sex attraction. So it can be everything from really physically invasive, like all the movies, right, and commercials, or it can go up to something as safe as talk therapy. And so when I was 37 years old, I was a stay-at-home mom of four beautiful kids. I had been married for 17 years and I thought everything was good and perfect. And yet for some reason, I was really dissatisfied with my life. And I was really ashamed of that because I was really hashtag blessed, right? And then I realized the reason I didn't enjoy my life was because I was not attracted to my husband or actually any man, and I was really in love with my best friend. Now, this was not okay with me. This is not something that I wanted to have be a reality in my life. I really liked the way my life was, but also I was really living for heaven. In the faith framework that I was in, if I were to go with those same-sex attractions, I would not end up in heaven, which means I would not be with my children for all of eternity. And that was not okay with me. And so I did whatever it took to get rid of this issue in my life. And if that meant seeing this guy who called himself a therapist, and I went four days a week for two hours a day for six months. What I didn't realize at the time was that 57% of people who participate in this therapy become suicidal. And that is where I ended up. At the end of those six months, I was barely functioning and I was dealing with all of these crazy thoughts in my head that I wasn't getting better because I'm not a good person and God doesn't want me in heaven anyway and 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 right like you can see where that goes down to a really deep pit and I couldn't figure out how to get myself out and a day came when my husband was like we've got to file for divorce because you're not even trying anymore and that was the first time I used my voice in six months. I realized I am trying so hard. In fact, it's all I can do to just stay alive every single day. And that's when we realized, oh, we've got a serious mental illness here and we've got to figure this out. And as I went to a real psychiatrist and realized, oh, this is really unhealthy for me. And if I keep going down this path, there's a good chance I'm not going to stay alive. When I thought about my children having the memory of going to my funeral, all of a sudden what I perceived as failure of being a lesbian and being divorced, yeah, that didn't look like failure anymore when I thought about my kids having that memory. And so that day I decided it was better for my kids to have a gay mom than a dead mom. And I claimed my life back. So I chose to stop going to conversion therapy. I chose to figure out what my relationship with God was really like. I chose to file for divorce and I moved out on my own for the first time since I was 20 years old. I became a full adult, but really I became a full woman. And that was beautiful because it opened me up to really incredible experiences like meeting my partner, moving in together and raising my kids together. We even have a decent relationship with my ex-husband. It's a really beautiful life and I'm really happy that I chose to stay. Elena, I am so glad that you decided to be true to yourself. Your happiness matters and all the man-made rules in the world won't get you there. Sometimes you have to create your own rules to feel your bliss. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. For women.